Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to select rows with React table. Up until now, we had a look at features like sorting, filtering, and pagination, which are all great features to view the data. However, in practical applications, you do come across scenarios where you have to select one or more rows and send those rows of data to an API endpoint. For example, if the table has a status field where the status is initially pending, I might want to select certain rows and update their status to success or rejected. Of course, in this video, we will not be making an API call with the selected rows, but we will see how to select rows with React table. So in the components folder, let's create a new file called rowselection.js. Copy the code from basic table and rename the component to row selection. For this example, we only need 10 rows. So in the component, I'm going to slice the first 10 rows. So const first page rows is equal to rows dot slice 0 comma 10. And then in the table body, we are going to map over this first page rows. So instead of rows.map, first page rows.map. If I include this component in app component and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have the 10 rows displayed in the browser. Let's go back to VS Code and implement the row selection functionality. Now let me tell you, there are a few parts to this feature and it's not as straightforward as the others. But once you do understand, it all just makes sense. So bear with me while we code through the video because I feel it all makes sense when we see the feature working in the browser. All right, for step one, we need to create a component that will help us with selecting rows. And that component is a checkbox component. So in the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called checkbox.js. Now this component is not your typical input checkbox HTML tag. It's a checkbox that caters to an indeterminate state in the React table. For now, I'm going to copy paste this code from the React table examples. As you can see, it's not the most straightforward checkbox to understand. So I simply want you to understand that we have created a checkbox component which accepts some props and applies them on the native input checkbox element. I'm not going to dive deeper into this, but like I mentioned, you can get this component code from the React table docs. So this is step one, creating a checkbox component for row selection. For step two, we head back to our row selection component. We begin by importing use row select from React table and passing it into the use table hook. So the second argument, use row select. This will give us a property that helps keep track of the selected rows. So from the table instance, the structure selected flat rows. We will see this in a bit, but selected flat rows gives you a flat array of rows that are currently selected in your table. Next, for step three, we need to tie the checkbox component we have created with the table component. We do that by programmatically adding in a column at the beginning of the table, where each row in the column is the checkbox component that we have defined. So after the use row select argument to use table, we are going to define an arrow function as argument. This function gets all the table hooks as an argument. What we want to do is add a column to the table. For that, we use the visible columns property on hooks. So within the function body, hooks dot visible columns dot push. 
visible columns is what defines the columns you see in the browser. The push function here accepts a function as argument. This function in turn receives all the columns as argument and returns an array of columns. Here we define our selection column. Each column, as we know, is an object. For the selection column, let's specify ID as selection. Next, we specify the column header. This again is going to be an arrow function. It receives a few arguments from which we are going to destructure get toggle all rows selected props. This is something the use row select hook provides us with. For the JSX, we simply return the checkbox component and pass in the row selected props. So this is the column header. Similarly, for each cell in a row, we get access to each row as argument and we return the checkbox, but this time we spread row dot get toggle row selected props. So that is our selection column. Now we need to maintain the other columns in the array for which we simply spread rest of the columns. So we now have the ability to select rows. To verify the selection, I'm simply going to stringify the selected flat rows in the UI. So after the table component, let's stringify selected flat rows. We basically map over each row and print the original row value in the browser. Now before we head to the browser, there is one important thing to take care of. And that is to remove the strict mode in index.js. At the time of recording this video, the strict mode would cause an error in the row selection mechanism. It should probably be fixed by the time you are viewing the video though. All right, if I now go back to the browser, we have selected flat rows before the footer, which is incorrect. So let's first fix that. Paste it after table. And I can also get rid of class name equals app to remove the center alignment. If I now go back to the browser, you can see that we have the first column, which is the selection column with only checkboxes. The header checkbox corresponds to the header property in the selection column and the row checkbox corresponds to the cell property for the selection column. The checkbox itself seems complex because it has to handle two states. If I select the first row, it doesn't seem to work because I have forgotten to add parentheses. So let's fix that. Back in the browser, if I now select the first row, you can see that the checkbox is checked and at the bottom, selected flat rows now displays all the data for that row. And since we can select multiple rows, the property is an array. So when I select more rows, you can see the corresponding selected rows as data at the bottom. The header checkbox behaves slightly different. If I refresh the page, you can see that it is not checked by default. If I click on it, it selects all the rows. If I click on it again, it deselects all the rows. If you select rows individually, the checkbox goes into an indeterminate state since all the rows are neither selected nor deselected. At the moment, I simply display the selected rows in the UI but for your use case, you can add a button which will then post the selected rows as data to an API endpoint. But this is pretty much how you implement row selection with React Table. Thank you guys for watching. 
Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.